The codable protocol makes it trivial to decode flat data. If you're decoding a single instance of a type, or an array or dictionary of those instances, then things just work. However, in this project, we're going to be decoding slightly more complex JSON. There'll be an array inside another array using different data types. If you want to decode this kind of hierarchical data, the key is to create separate types for each level you have. As long as the data matches the hierarchy you've asked for, Codable is capable of decoding everything with no further work from us. To demonstrate this, put this button into your content view. Button, decode JSON. Let input equals, quote, quote, quote. Name, Taylor Swift. Address, Street 555, Taylor Swift Avenue. City, Nashville. Quote, quote, quote. Then a comment, more code to come. That creates a string of JSON and code. In case you aren't too familiar with JSON, it's probably best to look at the Swift structs that match it. You can put these directly into the button action or outside of the content view struct. It doesn't matter. Struct user conforms to codable. Var name, string. Var address, address. Then struct address conforms to codable. Var street, string. Var city, string. Hopefully you can now see what the JSON contains. A user has a name string and an address, and addresses are a street string and a city string. Now for the best part, we can convert our JSON string to the data type, which is what Codable works with, then decode that into a user instance. Let data equals data input.utf8. Let decoder equals JSON decoder. If let user equals try question mark decoder.decode user.self from data, print user.address.street. If you run that program and tap the button, you should see the address printed out. Although, just for the avoidance of doubt, I should say that's not her actual address. There is no limit to the number of levels Codable will go through. All that matters is the structure you define match your JSON string. That brings us to the end of the overview for this project, so please go ahead and reset contentview.swift to its original state.